Hello everyone, my name is uh, Pablo and today I'm going to demo LAN automation using uh, DNA Center. Okay, so these are the demo steps that are, I'm going to take uh, today and this is the diagram uh, that uh, again uh, I'm going to be using uh, in this demo. So there's a fusion device in the context of software-defined access uh, in here. Uh, so we have DNA Center and Identity Services Engine. We have our border one and border two, which uh, I have provisioned over plug and play and demonstrated a uh, software image management uh, on these two in previous videos. Uh, in today's video, uh, they're going to serve as my seed device and the peer seed device. So from these two, we're going to LAN automate this uh, edge, edge devices, which are again sitting on a out of the box uh, state. So all these links and uh, these cross links uh, that we have here are going to be automated via DNA Center with a layer 3 underlay uh, network. We'll see how that uh, gets done. First of all, we have to uh, provision these uh, borders. Uh, we had onboarded them onto DNA Center, but we are missing uh, provision or the network settings uh, on those. So before we do that, we need to add the TACAC plus uh, configurations uh, in ICE. So DNA Center can push that config and then be able to continue to log in to those devices uh, after we provision them. And then we'll run over the LAN automation, which is comprised of uh, these uh, steps, as you can see them there. And at the end, we'll again uh, provision uh, edge number one and edge number two. Okay, let's uh, go to a login page for actually for identity service and engine. Uh, while we let while we let that log in there, uh, let's actually go to Logging in as well into DNA Center. Just do a quick review. So on our design page, our golden image for 9300 switches is 17.6.3. And our inventory, part of our inventory, we have then border 1, border 2 already running 17.6.3. Uh, one last thing, so our network settings at a global level, we're going to then provision AAA server settings, uh, for both for the network, so this will be our TACAX configuration, as well as the client endpoint uh, AAA configuration uh, for client authentication, either wired or wireless. So we'll provision uh, what's our DHCP server going to be for an SD access uh, network, DNS, NTP, so on and so forth. Okay, and again, the device credentials that DNA Center will, will use are, are in here. So it's telling me that one device needs uh, an update. I can look at, into that uh, at a later stage. Okay, so let's just go back to inventory and leave that page in there for now. Uh, from a nice perspective, or actually, if we Check then our border devices. So these are these are going to be uh, edge one and edge two. I just clicked there yes on the command DMPA service reset. I assume want to continue say yes. And so that's reloading now. That's going to set that device as a out of the box state. We'll do the same with this one, which is going to be edge number two. And over here, let's go to border one. Just to show there's no AAA configuration uh, in there, so we'll see how DNA Center provisions that. Okay, from an ICE perspective, then, um, as part of the onboarding of the borders uh, in DNA Center, uh, well, let's, uh, let me quickly show that. Um, 
DNA Center, I had integrated DNA Center with the eyes in advance uh, of creating these videos. So if I go to System Settings, External Services, Authentication and Policy Servers, my eyes server is uh, already uh, integrated into uh, DNA Center. Okay, so I had uh, on the advanced settings enabled both radius and tag -rack. Right. Oh, I leave it back into the inventory page. And as part of the onboarding of the two border devices, the two border nodes, and DNA Center had automatically populated those network devices into ICE. So I didn't have to do any of this uh, configuration, which is nice. If, uh, if we review there, it has put there the, the name. Uh, radius configuration, uh, TACAC configuration, SNMP settings, and as well our TROSSEC uh, settings. So we're talking about an SD access network. This will be what we call the micro segmentation with the security group tags. So that's nice that the NA Center has uh, populated that information in there. And when we do the LAN automation and onboard the H1 and number two, we'll see those two being added at, uh, into this list. Okay, uh, we have to also before uh, deploying or configuring TACAC, we need to make sure that from a depo deployment perspective, uh, the device administration service is enabled. And so that's uh, done in there. And from a licensing perspective, then we'll see that license uh, being consumed. So device admin, so consumption of uh, one license. Okay. So next thing, so I'm going to use uh, local, um, the local user store for uh, the identity. So as I can see, there's no users uh, or groups created uh, so far. Uh, so I'm going to um, maybe create a, a, a grouping here. So let's start me. And I'll create an identity in here. So username let's put BNAC. Login password. My secure password. And for the enable password, first name, DNAC. Okay, so which user group is this going to belong to? So we put it into the net admins uh, group in there. Okay, so needs the uh, complaining get that like that so do not match okay okay so let's see at least one digit Okay, so I'll change that at the end. Okay, so that will mean that we'll have to change our credentials in here just to match that uh, that new password. So in DNA Center, that being a password. Okay, so that's been done in there. I may have to update that on the devices. 
at least in the border one and border two. So let's see if it, it allows me inventory, edit devices, CLI, credentials, CLI. Let's update that. All right, so that DNA center has updated that on the port one and port two. Okay, so we're, we're, I think we're good to go uh, on that front. Um, let's go to then um, our work centers and device administration. But our user identity group is the same, uh, the identity. And we have our username uh, DNAC in there. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, we may have to um, well, we'll leave it at that for now. Let's, uh, let's just uh, run through uh, quickly. So uh, let's go for a tag X, uh, profile. So if we go to policy elements, results. And profile. Uh, so let's create here one of those. Um, again, net admin. Default privilege and maximum. So we set that to 15. That's enough for now. Uh, and actually we may be we may need to create a group for those uh, devices so we'll do that now so uh, let's go to user um, or network resources network device groups let's add one more so this will be switches so this will be under device types And we'll create one as well for later on wireless. Okay. So we have that in there. So if we go to policy elements or define an admin policy set, uh, I should say. Uh, let's add one more in here. Let's uh, call it tagx plus. My condition will be I'll do one for switches and, and there long I'll do one for, for wireless. The device type is uh, switches. I'm going to use that. Uh, let's use the default network a device that thing. Save that. Okay, so. Let's name it uh, switches. Okay. So my authentication policy will then will then be uh, the default, and all user identity stores. That's fine. And for my authorization, I'm going to then add one for and that means. So let's go here. So if the identity group is equal to not the description, but the name, uh, it's someone, let's see, and admins. So let's. Uh, I thought I had created one already. Seems like it didn't take it. Uh, 
actually this is the command set so let's select the shell profile let's save that okay, but that should ideally finalize the packet uh, configuration so let's go to dna center and then provision uh, these two devices Come back to our powerpoint so add packet configuration and then provision port one and two okay, so we go provision there's no extra templates uh, assigned because i haven't created a, a day, day and templates or network profile for that type of template so these are the network settings that the uh, center will push. So these are coming from the network settings in the design page we've seen. Okay, so let's deploy. Let's do it now. You can, before deploying any of this, you can generate a configuration preview. Make sure that uh, all the configuration satisfy your, your requirements before pushing anything to the devices. I'm going to do it uh, right now. I can change the focus to provision and provisioning status seems to have been or still shown configuration uh, configuring it's actually configuring in there if we go to the CLI of that border for example so show run Action AAA, we see then a bunch of configuration having applied, been applied in there. Right now it's showing uh, us dead in there. And let's see if. It's showing us that let's give it a, a minute or two before it comes back okay, so actually that hasn't come back uh, but uh, let's see so in our live logs i'm seeing it's hitting the default rule which is the uh, i everything but i'm seeing the device type is all device types so i had forgotten to assign those devices as switches so let's edit those and device type go with switches order two and device type actually not, not location That's uh, down there. So ideally, okay, so it seems like they're showing something different now. And let's try to. To a rethink. So they said to replace servers, replace servers up. And if I do show CTS environment data, it has downloaded again the, the environment data in there. So CTS part. Has downloaded the, the pack as well from from ice just one more look here oh the the, the old one the yes, request has uh, completed in there okay so that's our packets uh, done in there uh, so now let's proceed with our LAN 
automation. If we go to our CLI for H1, H2, so again, these are 9300 for the AU, and they're in an out of the box state from the, that plug and play uh, agent. Okay, so as part of the design phase, I had added a number of uh, IP pools into the DNA center, including I had added a global pool in there, where at the east point level, I have reserved the land automation uh, IP pool. So I specified that one as a type LAN, and that's the subnet uh, assigned to it. Go back to inventory. Mm, let's go with the provision land automation. So my primary site will be what if it comes from? What one would be my primary site? And my peer site will be again in the comes room or uh, two. So let's select the ports that are going down towards the network. So DNA Center wants you to check or to select what are these ports from a seed perspective. So if we look then at our port one, I have two links going down. So 101 and 103. 101 and 103. Uh, nicely highlighting them as up, so make the, that selection easier. That's down there. Uh, the discovered sites are going to go into floor one. Uh, the pool that I'm going to use the land automation pool. Uh, let's do a password for the ISIS uh, domain. So land automation. We'll use ISIS as the internal gateway protocol, so IGP, the routing protocol. Uh, let's enable multicast in there. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, device uh, host and pre prefix. So I can put an E. So DNA Center, if it's uh, discovering if there were 10 switches uh, that we're going to provision with LAN automation, it will go E-1, dash dash 2, dash 3, all the way to to 10. You can also specify a sample file where you want devices to have a, a particular name assigned to them. So you would uh, download that sample file and specify serial numbers and the names then that you want to specify. Okay, so seems like uh, everything is okay. Uh, it's giving you here a uh, Notice that device will be auto upgraded to the golden image. Uh, as we can see here from these edge devices, they're running. Uh, we've seen earlier 17.61, our golden image 17.63. So these devices will be upgraded as part of the, the process. Okay, will be upgraded automatically, and uh, so on and so forth. So let's uh, accept that. Okay, so it's giving an error for VLAN 1 uh, on the primary device. Uh, so what we'll have to do, there's probably some configuration still in there. I'll go to 1, let's check. Yeah, it is. Uh, so let's default interface VLAN 1. Let's take a look at order two just in case. Okay. 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 Okay.
okay, so I'm bored of one again. Uh, we'll have to rethink. So DNA center notices the, the changes. I'll post the video and wait uh, until the change is completed. Okay, they have gone into uh, thinking. They were taking a while to think, so I realized that the, the credentials were still uh, wrong, so it was uh, failing here with the wrong password. So although I had changed the credentials under the network settings here, I had forgotten to click apply. There was a, an apply button in there. Uh, so as soon as I did that, then um, the changes uh, took effect and I could see then the, the authentication uh, passing now, the TACX uh, authentication. So they're, they're in a managed state. Uh, uh, hopefully the VLAN 1 configuration is gone. We can then start the LAN automation now. So all the stuff, uh, the configurations are still there. Uh, so let's uh, start that up. Okay, so let's get rid of the domain password for a second. Okay, so land remission started. Uh, so let's uh, go here. Before on the border one, there I was doing a show run IP DHCP. Uh, there was nothing in there, but as I can see here, the DNA center has provision a DHCP uh, with the option 43. And show run interface VLAN 1. VNA Center has uh, put some configuration in VLAN 1 there. I can see already something happening on edge number one and edge number two. Uh, so first thing DNA Center will do is uh, upgrade the software on those and then provision the configuration. We'll take a second or two to show uh, two devices in progress. Uh, I'll wait until that shows up and then I will post the video and wait until the upgrade and the initial discovery is uh, complete. Okay, so that's uh, showing uh, two devices uh, in there. And I can see then uh, from the edge one and edge two, that plug and play is uh, starting in there. The DNA center logging into border one as well. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, I'll let that uh, run through in there. Uh, you can see then it's discovered E dash one, E dash uh, two. And on the logs, then I can see what a bit of the history. Uh, of what's uh, going on in there. So soon this uh, DNA center will start upgrading the the image on those two devices. And once that's done, I will uh, come back. So for right now, I'm going to be uh, pausing uh, the video. I'm going to do a quick uh, unpause uh, there. Uh, the logs still showing the same there, but I can see on the CLI, uh, the 1763 image is uh, starting the install. Uh, but if we go back to summary, there's a couple of uh, primary, uh, the primary and the peer device. If I go on details, uh, I can see that DNA Center has uh, created some configuration for this particular device. Uh, in this case, it's uh, reserved as well, uh, the loopback uh, and ISIS uh, configuration. Uh, that is going to be assigned to it. Uh, it's on the layer two create link uh, for the moment. So, so we can get reachability to the devices uh, underneath. So for interface one and three, and a number of other uh, things like the DHCP that we've seen 
created on the CLI. So that one there, network orchestration 1053.19.0. So all that is there. Yeah, so it's uh, nice to see the configuration that DNA Center has been uh, configuring in there. Okay, just go back. And I will pause the video for now and wait for that upgrade to finalize. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, so I can see from the switch perspective uh, that has gone through the upgrade. Uh, so the upgrade has been completed, the device uh, reloaded with um, 1763 in this case. Let's come up now, same as the other one. And the device has been added to the inventory. Okay, so land automation is a two step process where the first Set of the process is discovering software image uh, uh, and so forth and the last process is then uh, the last step is then assigning uh, ip addresses uh, and, and all that uh, and all of that uh, so as you can see here the start of the land automation is discovering onboarding and upgrading the software and once we the, the second step is the stop land automation which then completes the configuration of uh, layer 3 interfaces with isis and put that device into a managed state uh, within DNA Center. So we have to make sure that we click stopping here because as you can see, it will be stuck in progress uh, in there. So we click stop, stop in progress. And we'll see then uh, DNA Center doing a set of uh, configurations uh, in there. Give it a, a, a minute or two. And part of that cleanup or, 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 or clicking stop means that DNA Center will also remove the DACP configuration uh, from the seat device. So you can see there the DACP config is gone. And VLAN 1 config is gone as well, so it's just showing up there a few seconds ago, but now, now it's gone. And from the edges perspective, then we can see neighboring devices uh, coming up. I do show ISIS neighbor. I have border two and border, border one and border two. So these are the two links uh, going up. And so border one and border two. And so far, I don't have any uh, show run. Triple A, I think it will work as well. So, no Triple A configuration because we haven't provisioned these devices uh, yet. Okay, so that's uh, being marked uh, as uh, completed. Uh, so, that's uh, what the NA Center has done. So, reserve subnet, configuring layer 3 devices, uh, device cleanup, and completed the, the LAN automation. So these are the two devices that have been provisioned. And if I refresh then my inventory, I can see then E1 and E2 added to, to the inventory. Part of the inventory, so let's change the role of this device. So border one and border two will be our border routers.
and h1 h2 will be uh, axis uh, what that will do is then when we change this to topology topology view we can see then that topology so by assigning a, a function to those devices they will the any center will create that uh, that topology okay so next thing as i mentioned there's no AAA configurations in there. So DNAC and enable password. Show run AAA. There's nothing there. And let's check as well in ICE. If we go to network devices, you can see then E1 and E2 have been added uh, successfully there. Okay, uh, let's then provision those two devices. So, provision device, floor one, uh, they've been assigned already to the floor one. No, any, and no templates, uh, so let's add all AAA settings, DHCP, DNS, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's do it now. If we go here on ice, radius uh, light log, uh, same thing as before, we will have to do make these guys part of the switches device type. So they hit the correct uh, policy set. So device type. Go back to radius light logs. Okay, so they're they're hidden. They're being authenticated correctly now. Same as center, the DNAC user is uh, successfully logging in now to E1 and E2. If I do, again, show run AAA. So all my configuration is uh, created in there now. And if I go show APS environment data, that hasn't started yet. So I think it's CTS refresh. So it has done the original or CTS information, so our Cisco TROSEC. And so we will use this uh, later on to create the security group tag uh, or group based security group tags to build a, a policy. All right, so that's our two devices uh, uh, on board into the NA Center via LAN automation, uh, which uh, are then provision as uh, with layer three uh, from uh, the border or seed devices all the way down to, to the access using ISIS as the routing protocol. Okay, so hopefully that video uh, was uh, helpful. And if you have any questions, just uh, reach out directly to, to me. Cheers, bye-bye.